Okay, let's talk about uh, more type of relationships. Uh, you know, you can have a symmetric relation. You can, you know, your relationship it could be transitive. It can also be anti-symmetric. So, what do we mean by symmetric? Okay, symmetric relation. So, symmetric relation would mean that if you know father is related to son, then son is also related to the father, right? So, uh, a relation. A relation on a set A is said to be symmetric. A relation on a set A is said to be symmetric. Symmetric if and only if or, or saying symmetric is equivalent to saying that AB, the ordered pair AB belongs to R should imply that BA also belongs to R. BA also belongs to R. So BA also belongs to R. Okay. So, so ARB should actually imply BRA. For all A and B belonging to the set A. I mean, for example, um, we can take an example of, uh, uh, you know, uh, identity and universal relation. These are two relations which will always be symmetric, right? A will always be related to A itself. And then, in fact, uh, in the universal relation, by definition, you get to know that it's symmetric also. Now, A, R, B implies B, R, A for all A, B belonging to um, the set A. In, in case, you know, you take up probably, say, perpendicular lines, okay, if, if two lines are perpendicular to each other, okay, X, R, Y, you know, we're t taking all the lines in a plane such that, Okay, so the set is of all lines in a plane and you're defining a relationship of x, y such that x is perpendicular to y. x, r, y means x is perpendicular to y. If x is perpendicular to y, then that means that y is also perpendicular to x, right? Okay, so if, if uh, x is perpendicular to y, if a line is perpendicular to another, it's the same uh, the other way around. Okay, one line perpendicular to the other. So, this would be a symmetric relation on lines, right? This would be a symmetric relation. R is R, in fact, you know, R will not be symmetric if, so what will happen? Uh, when is R not symmetric? If there are two, if there are two, at least two elements in fact. I should have written at least out here, at least two elements. So, you know, to prove, you need to prove everything. To disprove, you just need one example. So, you, if, in case you can get at least two elements A, B such that A, B belongs to R, but B, A does not belong to R. Then that would mean that the relation is not symmetric. That would mean that the relation is not symmetric. You know, we can take an example of certain numbers, say 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 4 numbers uh, we've taken up. And let's take relation R as the, you know, set of ordered pairs. So, set of ordered pairs like uh, uh, 1, 3, 1, 4, 3, 1. Two, two, four, one. Now, can you see something out here? This is symmetric. This is symmetric. Why? For 4, 1, you have 1, 4, 1, 3, you have 3, 1, you have 2, 2. Okay, so A, R, B is, if A, R, B is there, then B, R, A is also there. And you can take another example where you can, you know, on the same set, just, just take out one element from R. You know, say, say, I've, I've taken out, uh, uh, I've taken out uh, 
for one then then this would not be of you know or, or i made it one one two two three three one three it is not symmetric okay now let's look at transitive relation now what does transitivity tells you now, transitivity would be essentially that if you know certain elements are related to certain elements if you're looking at uh, a in case a are b and b are c okay then b being common then you can have a r c okay then you can directly look at the relationship between a and c so in case you have some common bonding then you can look at direct relationship so so r is said to be transitive if and only if a b belongs to r and b c belongs to r this implies in in case this implies that a c belongs to r then that would mean that this relationship is transitive for all a b c belonging to a so this has to happen for all a b c belonging to a so that means that a r b and b r c implies a r c so relating if b is common then then relating a and c directly is 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 the result of transitivity so if if you think in your head identity relation and universal relation again should both be transitive should both be transitive so identity relation so a a so of course they are transitive so okay uh another example can be say you know less than okay so less than is a relation so x less than y y less than z that that would imply x is less than z okay for all natural numbers right if x is less than y and y is less than z then then for sure you can say that x would be less than z right so under natural numbers this is a transitive relations and 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 uh, as i said identity and universal relation would on, on a non empty set okay on a non empty set would be transitive you can think about it time identity and universal why actually they would be transitive a uh, pretty obvious but still i would like you to ponder 2 minutes on it um, of course on a non empty set a okay a non empty a of course on that now uh probably we could take another example then let's just uh, let me just strike another example for you um mm. okay let's let's have an r a uh, relation r let's have a relation r on on power set on on power set on a power set okay so described by power set power set of a okay r is a relation on the power set of a so this relation is described by uh, a is a subset of b for all a b belonging to the power set okay so a the ordered pair a b belongs to r would mean that a is a subset of b for all a and b belonging to the power set let's denote it as b s for that matter okay so power set okay then r what can we say about transitivity what can we say about transitivity then then if you take up any three sets a b c from the power set such that a is related to 
B or A is a subset of B and B is a subset of C. Can we say something about A and C? Yes, A would be a subset of C directly, right? A would be a subset of C. You can picture that. A would be a subset of C in case A is a subset of B and B is a subset of C. So, transitivity will hold out here, right? So, A, R, C. Now, let's talk about anti-symmetric. So, we've done symmetric, we've done transitive. Now, let's talk about anti-symmetric relation. Now, what do we mean by anti-symmetric relation? Now, anti-symmetric would essentially mean that in case the ordered pair AB belongs to R and BA also belongs to R, that should imply that A equals to B. So, let us first take a set which is non-empty or, or any set for that matter. Let's take any set and then let's take a relation R. Let's take a relation R. Now, this relation R will be known as anti-symmetric if the ordered pair AB, if and only if, it's an if and only if, it's equivalent relation, if and only if AB belonging to R and BA also belongs to R, that implies that actually A equals to B for all A and B. A equals to B for all A and B. So, in case you want to prove that something is anti-symmetric, okay, some, some set is anti-symmetric, what we would require to do is, is that in case A and B belongs to R and A and B belongs to R and and then B comma A does not belong to R then then also then also Actually, R is an anti-symmetric relation. So, for anti-symmetric, essentially, first symmetric should hold, okay? The first thing is that symmetric should hold for anti-symmetric as well. Now, you can see that identity relation would be anti-symmetric, right? Identity relation would be anti-symmetric. Okay, identity relation would be anti-symmetric. Okay, apart from that, what example we can probably put is that in case, in case the power set, in case the power set of, of A, let's look at the power set of A. Let's take that example of power set of A. A, so A, B, A, B is, is uh, you know, uh, belongs to R, okay, the relation R, that means A is a subset of B, A is a subset of B, and B is a subset of A, and also we look at the symmetric point, which is, which means that B, A, the ordered pair B, A belongs to R, that means B is a subset of A, so A is a subset of B, B is a subset of a. So, what does that mean? That actually means that there is double containment, which means the set A equals to B. So, that means this relationship is anti-symmetric. Okay? So, for anti-symmetric, first of all, symmetric relation should hold and then equality. Also, the less than or equal to. In case you look at, uh, you know, less than or equal to relation in natural numbers, what you get to know is that in case you're looking at x and y, okay, in case you're looking at x and y, so uh, x is less than or equal to y and y is less than or equal to um, x or a and b. I mean, a is less than or equal to b and b is less than or equal to a. A, uh, my mistake, yeah. B is less than or equal to A, then that means that 
that means that a should equal to b for all a and b okay and so this is what we mean by the anti symmetric relation 